Okay. I want to say good morning and welcome to the uh, worship services here at First Presbyterian Church. We have a, because of the annual meeting today, we have a great crowd here, I'm sure, and uh, glad that they're here, glad that you're here. It is, uh, it is good to be together on this uh, 24th day of January, 2021. As we begin, it has become our custom to light the Christ candle, just to remind ourselves that even a pandemic can't separate us from our Lord Jesus Christ, who has promised to be with us always. O oh, great God, who are you? O oh, awesome God, where are you? O oh, loving God, show yourself to us in this place at this time. We are here because we want to know you more fully. Speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. Our call to worship comes from Psalm 139. I find my rest in God. It is God who gives me hope. God is my rock and the one who saves me. God is my mighty rock and my place of safety. Trust in him at all times, you people. Tell him all your troubles. God is our place of safety. Surely ordinary people are only a breath. Important people are not what they seem to be. Don't trust in money you have taken from others. Don't put false hope in things you have stolen. Even if your riches grow, don't put your trust in them. I have heard God say two things. One is that power belongs to God alone. The other is that God's love never ends. God will reward everyone in keeping with what they have done.
couple of announcements to share with you. Uh, first, just by way of kind of a public service announcement, uh, I was relieved, uh, I don't know if I would say I was excited, but I, I was notified in the last week or so that ministers are being grandfathered in to the first round of vaccinations for COVID. That's pretty cool. So I'm going to have my first shot at the public health tomorrow. And then 28 days later, because I'm doing the Moderna vaccine, I'll follow that up with the second shot. But uh, all of that is a way to say that when it becomes your opportunity to get the vaccine, even if you don't like to do vaccines, the sooner 70 to 80% of us get the vaccine, the sooner a lot of things, theoretically anyway, are going to get back to, you're going to be able to go to some of the places you want to go to, some of this herd immunity starts to develop. So no matter how you feel about some vaccines, I just want to encourage you to think seriously about getting the vaccine uh, when it is your opportunity to do so. So that's just a public service announcement. As uh, soon as we're done with this worship time, we are going to have our 2020 annual meeting. Uh, we will have, uh, obviously in person, but we're going to be on Zoom. Uh, for those of you watching on Facebook, or even if you're not, the, uh, there's two ways you can link to Zoom. One is there's a link on the Facebook page, so you can just click it and go. The other is I emailed two, twice out to the congregation this past week uh, with the information to get on Zoom. So uh, that is going to happen as soon as we are done here with worship. Um, that's what I got for announcements at this point. We've got uh, prayer time. We've got a number of people here. Uh, just let me give you a couple updates. Uh, John Blinn has started. He's got, gotten his first week of radiation done, so we want to be in prayer for him uh, as he right now travels back and forth to, uh, to Mayo to get that done. Um, also want to mention, we added another of D. Kaiser's daughters to the uh, cancer prayer list. Dee right now, most of you are aware, she buried her husband, Ron, not too long ago, just a couple weeks, and, and uh, now she has two daughters battling cancer. So uh, a lot on their plate, so we want to pray for both Lana and Lisa, but uh, also for the Kaiser family as they try to deal with uh, a lot of heavy stuff. And you know, so many of our plates are so full. Uh, in fact, we were just talking about that. When you think about the pandemic and looking at pictures, you know, I had a picture on the screen, it was on Facebook a year ago. We were having our potluck with our annual meeting and uh, totally unaware that we were about to get blindsided by a pandemic. Uh, lots has changed between now and then. And during the pandemic, a lot of other stuff went on and continues to go on. And so I think so many of us, we're not, as I've said before, we're, in the, we're not in the same boat, but we are certainly in the same storm. And uh, so everyone's got a full plate. So I think keeping our friends, family, each other in our prayers is so important. So friends, let's take a few moments and let's be in prayer together. Lord, as we weather the storm, and it's just not the pandemic, it's just not the politics, it's just not racism, it's just not any one thing, it's all of these things. And Lord, I think many of us would resonate that our plates are full. There is a lot going on. And at times I, I know I feel, and I don't believe I'm alone, feel overwhelmed. And you are the God for overwhelmed people. How many times do we read in Scripture where you offer us peace? Peace not as the world gives. This world doesn't know how to give peace. This world just knows how to fill our plates with more stuff. So Lord, we come seeking you as the Prince of Peace. Peace that goes beyond our ability to understand and comprehend it. Peace that drills through all the stuff that's on the plate and gets right into our hearts. Peace that reassures us that we are loved. 
Peace that reassures us that you are present. Peace that reassures us that nothing will separate us from that presence. And peace that constantly reminds us of the hope that is ours in our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I think we could all use a little of your peace in our hearts and lives today. And it's there. May we embrace it, but more importantly, may your peace embrace us. Lord, as we uh, lift up our prayers today, we want, we're cognizant of John and all that he's going through with his family, and we pray that uh, these treatments, radiation will be successful, the process of his healing will go forward and will be successful, and that you'll be his strength, his family's strength during this time. For the Trimble family, as they continue to mourn the passing of Sue, we pray that you'll continue to be their strong support during this time, and as the Harmses and Rosendale dolls and that family mourn the passing of a brother and a son, we pray you'll continue to be not just their strong support, but they need the peace that goes beyond all understanding as well. Thank you for Roger and how he's doing. For Brody being treated for leukemia, we continue to pray for that. For Frankie and Monty and Jim and Beth as they continue to deal with health-related issues. For those battling cancer like Dina and Mark and Susan, Cindy and Susie, Wanda, both Lana and Lisa and the Kaiser family especially, Craig and Ju Judy's nephew Mike. Be with these folks. Be with the families they represent. Be with the friends who stand with them on their cancer journeys. Lord, thank you for the people in our lives, family and friends who stand with us, who give us the gift of peace as well. For how often is it that we experience your presence, O oh Lord, through the people who love us and who are with us? Lord, on this journey of life, you have promised to be with us, but for the traveling companions who walk with us, who help us bear our burdens and we help with theirs. We give you thanks. It was never your intent that anyone be alone. And Lord, may we be assured of your presence during these days as we meander through this life with plates that are way too full. Join our hearts as one as together we pray the prayer Jesus taught us when he prayed, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Scripture reading today is going to be from Jonah. Jonah, familiar story. This is Jonah chapter 3, verses 1 to 5, and then verse 10. This is the uh, moment at which Jonah has just been thrown up by the whale on the shore outside of Nineveh. A message from the Lord came to Jonah a second time. The Lord said, go to the great city of Nineveh. Announce to its people the message I give you. Jonah obeyed the Lord. He went to Nineveh. It was a very large city. In fact, it took about three days to go through it. Jonah began by going one whole day into the city. As he went, he announced, In 40 days, Nineveh will be destroyed. The people of Nineveh believed God's warning, so they decided not to eat any food for a while, and all of them put on the rough clothing people wear when they're sad. That's what everyone did, from the least important of them to the most important. God saw what they did. He saw that they stopped doing what was evil. 
So he took pity on them. He didn't destroy them as he said he would. The date had been on my calendar since last July. I was not looking forward to this appointment. My physical. Specifically, my A1C. With the pandemic, I had become lax. Now, I know that I finished the last quarter of 2020 not behaving very well, eating what I wanted, drinking what I wanted, not exercising. Not good. I was fully aware of it. Now, it's no solace that I was not alone. You all have been lax, too. So I went in for my blood test prior to my doctor's appointment. I got the results later that day. All of my numbers were excellent, except one. My A1C was up, just as I knew it would be. Last Tuesday was my appointment with the doctor. Even before I went in, I knew what the doctor was going to say, and I did not want to hear it. We've been talking about a reboot, a reboot of our lives, a reboot of the church. Reboot is a computer term. When your computer's not running right, if you shut it down and restart it, it clears out the memory, and hopefully will function more as the designer of the computer intended. Now, we've extended that concept to you as a human and to the church. A reboot is needed if you or the church has become sluggish or unmotivated. A reboot is needed if you or the church are struggling with limited resources, with people, time, and money resources. A reboot is needed if you or the church needs to improve your connections with people. The goal of a reboot is to get you to get the church operating as the designer, the Lord God intended. Now God's first words spoken in Genesis were, let there be light. Into the chaos that was the world, God speaks, and God's words bring order to the chaos. God's creative word that brings harmony between the creation and the creator, between you and your God. The goal of the reboot is for us as a church and as individuals to allow and to nurture the light of Christ that is in each of us to burn more brightly. How many times have we complained that we have no vision in our lives or in our church? When the truth is we're running around, doing our own things, listening to the voices we like, and blissfully unaware of God, and then wonder why there is chaos. If you're ready to unleash the creative power of God to bring harmony in your life and in the church, here's where it all begins. Here I am, God. I'm listening. 2020 has been a game changer. There's no more business as usual. Change is hard, but change is a constant reality of life. FPC, our First Presbyterian Church, needs to engage that change, be open to that change. And we do that by listening to what God is saying to us. What is, there's, what is waiting for a start? Where did that little nudge come from that you can't really explain it, you just feel it? And then what's next? If you want the light of Christ to be seen in you, to be seen in the church, then you must understand what to do to make the light shine brightly. It involves listening to God. Distinguishing that voice from all the other noise in your life but listening to God is only half the challenge. What if you don't like what you hear? Let me introduce you to the poster child for not liking what God says. Jonah was a prophet. 
who spoke the word of God to the people of Israel. One day God said to Jonah, Jonah, I want you to go to Nineveh. And I want you to tell the people who are there to stop being bad people. The only problem was, Jonah didn't want to help the people in Nineveh. Nineveh was one of Israel's greatest enemies. So instead of listening to God, Jonah decides to run away. He goes in the opposite direction of Nineveh, and he had no intention of doing what God asked. He ran to the port of Joppa, where he found a ship to take him to Tarshish. Shortly after the boat left the shore, a huge storm comes up. Tossing the boat here in two, and all the people on the boat are afraid, deathly afraid. Ironically, Jonah was fast asleep. The captain of the boat finds Jonah, wakes him up, and says, You need to pray to your God for help. We're praying to all of our gods. You've got to pray to yours. Well, after a while, the boat crew decided that Jonah was the problem. The storm was Jonah's fault. And so they asked Jonah, what have you done? What God do you believe in? What can we do to make this storm stop? And Jonah told them, I believe in the Lord God of heaven, who made the sea and the land, and I am running away from something God asked me to do. It's my fault this is happening. If you throw me into the sea, the storm will stop. They picked up Jonah, threw him into the sea. The storm immediately stopped, and the sea became still. God sent a huge fish that came and swallowed up Jonah and kept, kept him from drowning. Jonah stayed inside the fish for three days, three nights. God has the big fish throw Jonah up on the shores of Nineveh. And that's where the text I read picks up. God speaks to Jonah a second time. Go to the great city of Nineveh, announce to the people the message I give you. Why did Jonah run from what God wanted him to do? God is sending Jonah to Nineveh, the capital of the Assyrian Empire, deadly enemies of Israel. Go to the great city of Nineveh, preach against it. The sins of the people have come to my attention. This is not what Jonah wants to hear. This is not a job he wants to do. And so, can we blame him when he starts running in the opposite direction? That would take three days to walk across this large city telling the people, in 40 days Nineveh will be destroyed. It seems logical that Jonah is running because he's afraid of what the Assyrians will do to him, that his mission there will fail miserably, and that it will fail at the cost of his own life. But that's not why Jonah is afraid. Jonah is not afraid he will fail and die. He's afraid he will be successful. He's afraid his message of warning might actually be heeded, that Nineveh might actually repent and be spared. Now that's a problem. Why? Because it challenges his narrative, Jonah's narrative of the world, of how he sees the world. Why would he want to see the mortal enemies of his people saved? These people deserve judgment. They deserve punishment. They're bad people. Notice what Jonah is fleeing from. He's not fleeing from the Assyrians. In Jonah chapter 1, verse 3, we read, Jonah ran away from the Lord. Jonah listened to what God said. He was not running because he was afraid of letting his light shine. He was running because he did not want to let his light shine. He knew God could do this thing. He ran because he knew if God did this, if the people of Nineveh repented, he would have to abandon his own narrative for his life and adopt God's narrative. For his life. The Assyrians would go from enemies to friends. 
That is a new narrative. That's God's narrative. We want to reserve the right to complain. We prefer to hang out with people who think like we do, who dislike and hate the same things we do. We prefer our own way of living. We have long prayed for God to condemn people and groups that we consider evil. But then God speaks. Go to those people and let your light shine. And if that works, as God intends, that means we will need to change our personal narrative. We don't like what God is saying to us, what God wants us to do, because it means coming around to God's way of thinking, God's way of looking at the world. Eugene Peterson puts it this way. We respond to the divine initiative, but we humbly request to choose the destination. We're going to be disciples, but not Nineveh for heaven's sake. Let's try Tarshish. In Tarshish, we can have a religious career without having to deal with God. What an interesting definition of the church today. Religious, but not wanting to deal with God. God has a plan to redeem this world. It involves sharing the light of Christ to bring the love of God to our world, to the Ninevehs of our world, and not run from it. Jonah ran. He ran from God, but there was no escaping God. Not for Jonah, not for you. On a beach outside of Nineveh, God patiently comes to Jonah the second time. Go to Nineveh, give the people the message that I gave to you. God speaks to us. Giving you a mission to the Ninevehs of our world, the places we don't want to go. But at the end of the day, you prefer your narrative of looking at the world instead of God's. Jonah was not sent to Nineveh to condemn it. He went to shine the light of Christ into the chaos to create harmony between the creation and its creator, between people and the God who loves them. The Ninevites repent. They believe in God. They proclaim a fast and put on sackcloth, young and old alike. Even the king of Nineveh rises from his throne, removes his robe, puts on a sackcloth, and sits in the ashes. He calls everyone in the city to turn from the evil they're doing. And God does what God loves to do. God forgives. They don't die. They live. If you don't listen to God, if you only serve God according to your own agenda, your own job description, your own desired outcomes, People don't live. The message of Jonah is all about listening to what God says and then doing what God says. When we do this, even when God has to come to us multiple times before we do what God is saying to us to do, the result is life. A reboot opens us to new opportunities and possibilities to be God's light in our world. And here's the hard truth. To obey God means you must disobey yourself. We must reject our narrative and embrace God's narrative. Let the light of Christ shine in you and through you. Put the interests of others ahead of your own. Love your enemies. Turn the other cheek. Be a peacemaker. Pray for others, especially those you don't like and you disagree with. There's no blessing and peace in Tarshish. That is reserved for those who go to Nineveh. What is the purpose for your life, for your church? 
You cannot answer those questions apart from listening to the one who designed your life. This morning, this sermon is a very personal one for me. Last fall, as I began to consider a reboot of my life, of the church, God was speaking to me. You're hearing much of the fruit of that over the last few weeks. And frankly, I was not liking everything I was hearing. I was certain I heard God saying, it's time to go to my Nineveh, but I was reluctant. It wasn't what I was, I wasn't afraid of Nineveh. I was just comfortable and happy. Going to Nineveh sounded inconvenient. As with Jonah, God speaks a second time and a third time until we finally listen and go to the Nineveh he is sending us to, or you just block out God completely. And that still small voice goes away. I've heard God speaking, and I've responded as best I can based on how I understand what God is saying. I told the session last Thursday, and I'm making the announcement now, I will be leaving Independence to become the interim pastor at Temple Terrace Presbyterian Church in Temple Terrace, Florida. That's in the Tampa Bay area. My last Sunday here will be March 14th. My connections with you and with this community run deep. That made fleeing to Tarshish more appealing. But God is nothing if not persistent. But this church and I, we both need a reboot. And what was becoming clear to me as I was thinking about this is that we could not do it together. The God who is leading me to Nineveh will also lead this church to wherever its Nineveh is. That doesn't mean it's a city full of evil people. It's just that place. We prefer what is. Even when it's not great, we prefer what is to the unknown of what could be. And here's what I know. If we listen, and if we go, and we do what God says, and we let our light shine, the result, the result will be life. I want to close with what is one of the hardest things Jesus ever said to us, at least whatever Jesus said to me anyway. Whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me will find it. Will you go to Nineveh? Or will you head to Tarshish? One direction is an attempt to save your life. The other is an attempt to lose our lives in what God is doing. And at the end of the day, the life that is gained or lost is going to be yours. Listening and doing. There is no reboot without it. Friends, we have been uh, doing our offering online. We've been doing our uh, offering in person with the plate that's in the back. As we think about our gifts and giving them to God, let me, uh, let me say a prayer for that. God is the giver of life and source of all that is good. We acknowledge the abundance of gifts that have been showered upon us and now return a portion of them in the hope that they might serve Christ's purposes in our community and in our world. Amen. Before I give the blessing, let me just say that the annual meeting will start. Lillian's going to play a little postlude, and then we will switch from Facebook to uh, Zoom. You should have that information if you want to join us. Receive the blessing. The word of the Lord has been proclaimed to us as it was to Jonah and the prophets. And the word is go. Go into the cities and the towns. Go to your home and your work and your places of play and share the love of God with all whom you meet. And the strength of Almighty God, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit will uphold you now and always. Amen.
Trying to get signed in here. Wouldn't you know it? I've never had a problem signing into Zoom until right this minute. Well, maybe people will be on Zoom. Maybe they won't. Could be worse. Ah, it's working. Technology is only good when it works. There we go. We can start it. We'll see who's in the waiting room. They may try to put us up on the screen here in a minute.